Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out yet another game engine. This one is a free game engine called Cave, and I've been meaning to cover this one for a very, very long time. I just never got around to it. So here we are today, getting around to it. This one is special because uh, it is a Python-based game engine. Uh, it's also available for completely free. Uh, you can use it to make commercial games if you so wish. I'll come back to some of the details about it in a second, but first I figured I would just go straight out hands-on. And welcome ladies and gentlemen to Cave Engine. As I mentioned, mentioned earlier on, this one is Python based. That is not a very common thing. Now one of the downsides to this engine is that it is um, Windows only. So if you are uh, using Linux, you're going to have to run through a compatibility layer like Wine. Uh, but it is, it's an interesting engine for sure. Uh, and especially uh, if you are looking for something with Python scripting, there's not a lot of 3D engines out there with Python scripting. Uh, later on the end of this video, I'll actually show you a couple of alternatives to this one. But if you want to go ahead and check it out, uh, this again is Cave Engine. So you can see here we got an animated model in the world. Uh, setting things up is pretty straightforward. So we got this little cube right here. Uh, what you could do with cube is add various different components components to it. So you've got things like vehicle controls, a UI layer, various different 3D options such as adding lights and such into the world. You've got physics integration and so on. Uh, you've got audio setups in 3D world, etc. So you've got your full editing environment. You've got your scene graph available over here. What I like about the scene graph is they actually call it a scene graph, uh, which is refreshingly optimal. Uh, and you'll notice down here you've got your various different assets. So what I'm going to do is do a right click. I'm going to create a new asset and I'm going to create an asset of type Python script right there. Okay, uh, so now that I have my script in place, we can go ahead and edit the script and we get our built-in script editor. So yes, there is a full-blown script editor in here as well. Uh, as you can see, your scripting environment is pretty straightforward. It follows the standard callback. So uh, you have a when done call here, a when starting call here, and then you have an update call here. Uh, what I'm going to do is do a simple update. Uh, and this again is using Python. So let's, let's just paste some code in here. Uh, Python is a white space language, so you do have to match in your indentations and so on. Uh, this is from their examples. I'll show you their documentation in just a second, but this is basically going to rotate this thing using a Euler angle. Angle, I can't say either word, Euler angle. All right, there we said it right now. I'll uh, we'll go back to our 3D view. We have our cube attached, uh, so we can stop editing our script. We will select our cube. The properties come up here. We can add a component. The component is type logic, and the logic is type Python component. And the Python component is our Python script available down here, so let's expand that component out. We will go to our scripts. We will select Python script. We will pick our script, and we will select my component from within that script, and that's it. And now you've got the ability to preview or play your level directly inside of the editor. So let's do that. And there you see our guy going and our cube spinning like a mad lad there in the background. Uh, so that's what it looks like. It's, uh, it's pretty straightforward, to be honest. Uh, the, um, the, the, there's a couple catches, so let's go here and stop right there. Uh, you do have full configurability of the editor, so I can take any one of these tabs and I can move it and dock it into another location or I can dock it into the other tab. I can move it into a scene like so. You can toggle off completely at the top. Uh, the thing about assets, one of the things with every game engine ever unto the sun is, how do you import assets? Well, that is pretty straightforward. You do it to your downloads folder and you find your asset. So uh, I've got some Cinti stuff here. I'll just use Cinti in this case. Uh, first things first, we're going to need a texture. So just go into textures, pick a texture, drop it into the scene. There you now have a texture available. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is go back to the same folder and I'm going to pick an FBX file. So drop back here. Uh, so let's go up a folder. We will go into the XBF files. Uh, we'll do a building. So let's do the boathouse right here. So boathouse one, drop that into the scene. You're going to see, you can name it. Uh, you can have it create a subfolder or not create a subfolder. Uh, it creates a mesh, a material. So we'll, we'll, we'll change the name of the material though. So boathouse. Uh, and then you can have a descriptor for it, and then you import it in. So here is our asset. It is created in a subfolder like so. We will select our material. As you can see, you've got control over there, various different material settings for your uh, albedo, roughness, metallic, typical PBR workflow. Come into your albedo channel, find your texture, which should show up automatically, or alternatively drag and drop it onto this spot, and you are good to go, uh, and then hit save. So once that is saved, you will see your new texture is in place. Uh, you can use this guy right here to instantiate the scene, or this guy over here is the mesh object. I'm going to go ahead and instantiate one into the scene. There you can see it right there. Uh, one thing you will notice is it is very, very, very large. I just find that uh, 
Things that are imported are uh, a thousand fold scale to what uh, a thousand times bigger than you, or sorry, a hundred times bigger than what you want. So what you often want to do is just come in here and scale the parent object down to 0 0.01, 0 0.01, and finally, eh, 0 0.01. I haven't found a way to do that uh, on the texture, unfortunately, so I've, it's only been able to do it on like a more universal basis. Now, as you may be able to tell, we're not quite there on our uh, material, so our material did not work out right, so we'll just drop our boathouse material on the boathouse. Oops, I dropped that on the mesh. Let me do that again. Drop the mesh back in place, drop the, mo the boathouse material into the boathouse material, and there you go. You've got a 3D imported object. Uh, nothing really challenging about that. On top of that, everything else is component driven, so let's move this guy up a little bit in the world. And if I wanted to, and I have found this really wonky to be honest, but hey, it makes for a demonstration. I'll come in here, go to physics, I will add a rigid body controller to it. We will select down the rigid body. We will turn this guy onto dynamic and check this guy out. And there is our world falling. And then, like I said, it gets a little wonky after the fact. Uh, so some of the collisions are a little bit interesting. By the way, this guy has a character controller on it. So you can see walking around, dealing with multiple animations, etc. in the world. It is a fully complete game engine. It, it, uh, I wish Escape would immediately exit out as opposed to bringing up a menu. Uh, but other than that, it, it's... It's quite nice, to be honest. And the big thing about this guy, again, is it is Python-driven, uh, and that is not something you see all the time. So that is, is something I definitely appreciate about this engine. So it is available up on itch.io. I will have the relevant links available down below. Again, it is Windows only. If you're wondering about it, Cave Engine is a simple, easy to use 3D desktop engine uh, scriptable in Python. You can use it to make any type of game you want and release them commercially. Uh, you can uh, expect a seamless development process with Cave with pretty much zero loading times. It does not require any shader or code compilations and asset handling as fast as possible. Uh, the engine provides a complete editor and all the functionality you might expect. So you got easy asset importing, things like FBX, Blend, OBJ, DAE. Uh, it's got an entity component based system architecture, uh, fully scriptable uh, Python scripting with a fast C++ back end. All the editor can be expanded using Python tooling, which is pretty cool. There is physics built in using bullet physics, though honestly, I found that a little bit wonky. Uh, you got a support for skeletal animation. It uses a physically based pen rendering pipeline uh, and more. So it is a very good generic game engine, C++ on the back end seems to be reasonably quick. If you want to use Python on the front end, and are you okay with that whole, this is for Windows only, it's a fun one to play around with. So if you wanted to get started playing games and you already know the Python language, Cave could be a good pickup for you. On top of that, it's also got documentation. So how refreshing is that? You actually got full documentation available here. Uh, it's all done for drop downs at the top here, so it may not be immediately obvious, but here you've got the API, walk through all the various different pieces that you need to know. So for example, if you wanna come in here and use the transform component, this is where I got that code from earlier on. All of the code, all of the API stuff, everything that you've seen here, the engine, all of its exposed stuff. Uh, so for example here, the delta time or quitting your scene or changing scenes or whatever else, it's all documented. So how refreshing is that? That's not something that you see all the time on these kind of projects. Now, this one is not open source. Uh, again, it's hosted up on itch.io, uh, but it is available as a free download. And again, it is fully documented, which is quite nice. Now I did mention earlier on, there are other Python based games engines out there. I've covered both of what I'm going to refer to here today in previous videos. I'm just going to make them, you know, aware to you. So for some reason, maybe you're on a different platform, so Windows only doesn't work for you, or maybe Cave didn't work out. There's also the Ursina engine. Uh, this is a Python-powered open source game engine. Uh, I actually think that this one was built on top of Panda 3D, uh, which, spoiler alert, there's also Panda 3D. Uh, Panda 3D is a very cool project. Uh, it was involved with Disney for a while, uh, but it's completely open sourced at this point in time. Uh, they're, they're still doing development on it. So the last update was in uh, December of 2022. Uh, it is a shockingly full functioning game engine. So this is more close to if you want to make a triple A style game. This was actually was used to make some, uh, uh, like online massive multiplayer games, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean online and a couple of other ones uh, were made using Panda 3D. So it, this is definitely a production tested. It's C++ on the back end, uh, Python on the front end once again. But if you want something a little bit more uh, 
small, uh, self-contained, but still pretty full functioning, well documented with a good editor. Uh, there is Cave Engine. Uh, so this one is a one to definitely check out. So again, you can get it here uh, available only on Windows, sadly. And there is also this quick demo project to get you up and running. Uh, installation is about as simple as it gets. You literally just unzip the executable and run it. Uh, same with the project, basically just unzip it and then you go into Cave Engine and you open it up. There's also some projects to get you up and going. So there are a couple of different uh, uh, structure of games that you can actually get started with. So let me see if I can get back from there. Uh, so these things, there is a, a vehicle template. It's kind of buggy, a top down, a first person and so on. Uh, and there's some videos out there to get you up and going as well. So if you want to go ahead and check this one out, uh, it is a very... Um, interesting engine also by the way if you're a patron you do get early access to new releases as they go forward uh, but this current release it came out a couple months ago so you're not that far behind uh, on the releases so again it is cave game engine uh, a python based game engine windows only unfortunately uh, let me know what you think comments down below and i'll talk to you all later goodbye